So good morning again. Um, welcome everybody. Um, we're also live streaming, so also uh, the people that are now online live, uh, welcome to the um, uh, to uh, to this speech in the aviation arena here in Madrid. Um, and I'm going to talk about ITVCS, um, modern voice communication. What is it? Where does it come from? Um, and it, our thinking about this started uh, when reading through the um, European ATM Aviation Master Plan. And you see here below on this picture uh, the air traffic services, the data services and the infrastructure. Um, this thinking of how things are separated in this new idea got us also the ideas how to bring in this concept into, new vo into the voice communication world. And thinking about IT, yeah, um, brings certain benefits because the picture we saw before from the European AT Master Plan is a typical IT picture with services, infrastructure and a data center. And we were thinking a voice communication is always a little bit of a strange animal in the tech room. Yeah? So there's a specific uh, hardware that looks specific, looks a little bit different maybe than the, the, the ATM uh, flight data planning system. Um, and we wanted to, to do something which can be integrated in just a normal data center yeah, uh, to get benefits. Yeah? Same people, same technology, um, uh, like any other, any other IT, uh, IT ATM system. Um, reducing the invest in legacy systems and still have the same maintenance procedures um, as in any other um, IT system. Still, it's a voice communication system. It will operate like a voice communication system. It will have the reliability needed from a, for a voice communication system uh, so that the learning curves are easy for both the outcalls and also for the air traffic management system engineering personnel. Um, what does that mean? Yeah. Uh, we integrate ATM-grade reliability with standard IT technology and processes. That is what, that's what ITVCS is. Yeah? And I will go through all these things which are on this, which are on the, this slide, yeah? uh, ranging from ATM grade IT, what is it, yeah? uh, to uh, a life cycle, um, uh, how is it done, basically. So what is ATM grade IT? ATM grade IT comes from yeah, today's world where I have the operation center where the controllers are working in a tower or in the ACC together with the technology they actually need to operate that system together with the, the servers or the, the, um, the, the way the system works yeah? and this is costly every tower needs an own system every ACC needs an own system they need personnel on site technology on site yeah? So what we do in, a, in an IT VCS system is to separate the control room from the data center and the technology you need to provide uh, the communication services. So, and we are the first with this idea, yeah? and this is based on um, a technology we call mosaics. And um, my predecessor speaker, Thomas Frenzel, already also used mosaics um, in his speech. Yeah? Mosaics is the frequentist technology which makes IT ATM grade, yeah? creating a redu redundant platform, but also bringing in the possibilities to integrate with other applications. Let me come back to that a little bit later on. Yeah? Um, within the data center, we use normal data center technology, normal servers, uh, normal Linux, and we lose the, use the latest generation of virtualization based on Docker technology um, to run our applications in small micro services and I will come to these services on the next slide um, to be able to run that system and if you look how that works yeah how do I create such a, an approach where I have a data center and then a, like a virtual center where I can operate my towers uh, my ACC my approach is actually from one uh, system uh, we introduce services like a frequency service. Yeah? The frequency service does everything which a frequency consists of. Calculating the BSS, dynamic delay compensation, main standby switchover, the channel management behind it. Um, that's all done within this frequency service. And you can actually deploy such a service anywhere you like in your network. So also here we separate the, the infrastructure, the radio, from the technology itself. 
so that an air traffic controller can actually sit anywhere within the net network VCS, within the distributed VCS, and use um, and operate an airspace. So from anywhere, for any airspace, by any controller at any time. And of course, when you think about this model and you, you would like to bring that further, um, introduce a second data center to create additional redundancy, a multi-redundancy layer where, I, uh, where it's possible to also switch between data centers uh, from the operator position. Uh, for instance, if there's a, a, a disaster in the, one of those data centers or the network connectivity is not working, that you can actually still um, operate and run, but just using a different data center, um, the same airspace from the same control room. So suddenly there are different scenarios which bring in contingency. Yeah? I can have operate the same airspace from a different control room, contingency control room, or run it from the same control room and have a contingency tech data center um, just to, to uh, work with different uh, failure modes and also create this multi-redundancy in this, in this manner. And you could even imagine um, that the data center is located in another country yeah, to create a, a, a cross-border a, a cross operation but still have the, the way um, the technology is operated, separated um, from uh, uh, what is being seen on the HMI so the, the, um, um, the controller can actually work the way they're used to and don't have to learn new procedures or get another additional training. And we say such an IT system must be scalable and flexible. And I think that is something that is resolved in a very nice way in the, in the VCS system. Um, we make the traffic predictable. How do we do that? Basically, also again, we introduce services here. Yeah? The bandwidth between the control room and the data center is basically only what you talk and hear. There's no need to transfer anything else because that's all you need as an air traffic controller. What I talk and what I hear. And that, may, that means that it doesn't matter how many frequencies are actually on the panel. Could be three or 28, yeah? the bandwidth is still the same, super predictable. And the same goes obviously for the, the um, uh, connection towards the radio. Only one connection is needed between a frequency service uh, and the radio. And the whole scalability of the system happens inside the data center where bandwidth is cheap, computing power is available, um, so that the whole system behaves in a super predictable and therefore also reliable manner. And if you scale that up, yeah, you could get, you get my spider web drawing. Yeah? So it just, everything stays the same outside of the data center. It just scales with the number of CWPs, maybe in the num with the number of radios. Um, and the whole load model remains within the data center where everything is, um, yeah, there is enough bandwidth, there is enough computing power. So the system behaves always in a very predictable manner. And on top of that, we have the parallel layer. Yeah, so that we have a, a parallel audio running on two system halves within the data center. The data center itself is redundant. Yeah? Um, there is, uh, so that there is always an audio path available between the CWP, even up to the radio using the ED137 linked session algorithm, uh, where you can actually have then two sessions up to the radio, so that if there's an outage somewhere in a network or within the data center, um, there's uh, an unaudible um, switchover, which makes the system super robust. When you think about implementing IT, you have to think about cybersecurity. And an ATM system, an IT ATM system, has to be cyber secure. Um, and we not only say security is built in, we have made it the core of the system. Yeah? And we use the terminology defense in depth. And defense in depth is not something which we invented, it's actually state of the art and data center security. And what does it mean? I always like to compare that with a medieval castle, which you would like to secure. Um, and in the medieval castle, there are also different layers of security. There's the water outside of the castle, there's a high wall, maybe soldiers on the high wall that try to protect. And inside of the castle, it's safe. Uh, um, at least I know all the people inside the castle, uh, so there's a cer certain level of trust. Uh, 
And if I take this analogy and bring this back to our technology of voice communication system, I could say I have my public zone. Yeah? That's everything which has to do with a telecommunication service provider, um, connections to, to the radios. Yeah? They're nice people, the telecommunication service provider, but can I really trust them? Mm. Don't know. Yeah? So there we need to protect ourselves. Yeah? We use the mechanisms like VPN, tunneling, encryption, firewalls. And since we are using a communication system, we actually have to communicate. Yeah? So commun the, the, what we are trying to protect when it comes to security is the communication itself. And if I want to call another ANSP, I have to get out of my trusted zone. It doesn't, it's just the way it is. And here we use session border controllers um, to um, support the connectivity of dynamic connections. Um, and that's mostly telephone. Yeah? Um, and then there's the trusted zone, and trusted zone sounds easy, yeah? uh, but who do you trust? Yeah? Um, there are many people that think, yeah, because it's behind the firewall, it's safe. No, it's not. Once somebody is inside your castle, you have to make sure that who is this, what is he doing here, yeah? and you have to create this trust. Yeah? And we do that um, by our built-in Mosaics authentication. So we have an own domain controller, part of the Mosaics framework, that actually authenticates all the hosts and all the services within the system. What does this bring? Yeah, it actually makes sure that no malicious code can actually run yeah, because it's not authenticated. Yeah? Um, and no host or computer can actually enter this domain of trusted systems um, uh, and try to, let's say, uh, do a man in the middle attack, these kinds of things. And this is typical um, for data center security. And security is a job that's actually never done. Yeah? Um, there's always the next vulnerability. So um, the security has a life cycle and you have to respect it that there will be the next vulnerability. So within our model of IT, there's uh, also the regular updates um, and the way how to regularly update built in. How to do that? Do it in small steps. If you think about your, your um, uh, CAA, um, the authority that has to um, uh, to approve the operation of the VCS, how to do it, make small steps, I change only this, I, this is tested, um, then you get it approved quickly. If you make big steps and big combinations of software, long lists, it takes forever to get it approved. So small steps uh, to, to make sure that you can also close your vulnerabilities quickly. How does it work yeah, in, in our model of the VCS, which we saw before? Yeah? We have our public zone protected via firewalls, VPN uh, tunnels yeah, between the different sites, yeah, the different operation center, the, the different radio sites, the data center. Um, and next to that, we have the, uh, the connection to the shared zone uh, where we have the authentication uh, created by the session border controller um, for typically ground-ground connection. And last but not least, we would have then um, our Mosaics domain controller creating the trust between the services that are running in the data center um, and also the host which the system actually consists of. And this comes all in, in the software package of the X10 um, uh, Mosaics delivery so that the authentication and also the certificate distribution and the whole identity management comes as one package so that you don't have to bother about it but still it can actually integrate it as it uses standard data center technology with your own domain. So it's not a separate domain, it could be a subdomain of um, the ANSP domain itself. And last but not least, user-centric design. Um, it is time for change. Uh, people are using smartphones, uh, people are, are used to interact different with technology, um, and we also um, bring that now to the world of VCS. Yeah? Uh, on the one hand, uh, we would like to bring flexibility um, so that you as a customer can actually create your own layouts, create your own HMI within the system with a um, web-based graphical user interface designer where you can actually use drag and drop, um, have a, um, decide the button sizes, button colors, which buttons are where, what are they doing, this can all be done by you as a customer uh, without any inter interaction uh, with uh, Frequentis itself. And on the HMI itself, 
We use gesture controls, for instance, swiping to get to context-sensitive menus uh, to operate uh, the VCS in a completely different way and also to make it much more intuitive and quick to operate and have a very clean and simple and easy to learn layout. A few examples, yeah, what you can actually build. Yeah, so uh, just an example of an, of an ACC layout. And you see here um, the flexibility where we have many frequencies and some of them are with uh, different channels, um, which you can actually uh, display on one uh, layout. Yeah. Um, how this is looking, you can add colors to it, uh, your own colors, um, also decide your own DA key sizes, um, uh, these type of things. Um, a more tower layout with less frequencies and more place for the DA keys. Um, uh, all things are possible. Um, and for instance, also a split layout where you have radio on the left and telephone on the right of the display uh, and a call queue in the middle. Uh, why not? It's um, basically only the limits is your imagination itself. And I mentioned mosaics and uh, Thomas Frenzel is now back here and he mentioned it, is, it, it as well in the previous presentation. Uh, and you see this mosaics is sort of the, the, connect, the, the glue between the applications. Um, and that's what it's about. It's not only creating the ATM grade part, yeah, so the redundancy and making normal software suddenly ATM grade software, but also the glue between different applications so that it is possible to also integrate VCS elements into a user interface of tower tools. Um, and this is what Mosaics is made for. Open interfaces, um, of course, for us, it's a, let's say, full service provider. Uh, we start with our own applications, but why not also integrate third party applications uh, like FDPS, uh, from Indra or Thales or wherever, wherever they, they're coming from, integrate VCS operations there uh, with our um, open interface for HMI. We actually, we actually worked on that, um, uh, specifying that in the course of single European Sky research in a project uh, around Virtual Center, uh, where we tried to, um, to get this open and also this layered um, uh, split um, already tested and demonstrated and we've done that uh, two years ago in a demonstration which was in with many many European countries also in a distributed VCS setup so uh, to conclude um, the first IT VCS yeah, uh, I mentioned life cycle security life cycle so update regularly update in small step small steps to actually always have an up-to-date system and we call that evergreen the system is always new. Huh? So you don't have to, let's say, throw good money after a very old system because you're all, you're, you have very always an up-to-date system with new software, with vulnerabilities closed that will help you. Virtual center, I, I showed it, any controller from any, um, fre any frequency from any location, separating control room, data center, and infrastructure as it's uh, been depicted in the European ATM master plan. Duplicated and parallel running audio, which gives you the seamless switch over. Full integration yeah, with the Mosaics um, uh, framework, the possibilities to integrate on one HMI, the possibilities also to integrate the operation. Think of combined mission management, combined role management, so that also the distribution of tasks in the, in the control room gets much, much more easy ac across different technologies. Um, the minimal bandwidth the bandwidth uh, and the predictability of the system and um, users in focus, a fully flexible configuration possibilities, uh, context sensitive interaction, a true next step into VCS modernization. And with my last slide, uh, which sort of concludes this all, um, I would like to thank you uh, for listening to me. Um, we, are, we have a stand here where we also brought a distribute, distributed system. Yeah? So um, we um, have brought some CWPs here to the, uh, to the show, but we didn't bring the system. We left that in our headquarters, which is in Vienna. Um, and actually we have um, this tip, what I showed on the slides, this remote separation of the control room shown here on the stand. So I invite you to come there and um, 
to, to have a look yeah, and uh, talk to us um, and share your questions. But I'm here now, so if there are any questions from the round, I'm welcome to answer them. Otherwise, thank you very much. <laughs>